So here we have a, an image of Chuck Close, a contemporary artist here, and it's a five by seven inch uh, photograph. You can notice that the contrast is very high so that we can see the shadow shapes so that they're easy to draw as well as um, it should be fairly easy for us to see and draw the outside edges. But in this case, we're not going to rely on those outside edges or just the outside edges of the line. Um, we're going to rely on shadow shape in order to make this look right. You can create a viewfinder by cutting out a one by one inch square here, or however big you print your image, but a one by one inch square so that you're only looking at one square at a time. And so this is going to make it easier to draw to take an image, whatever image you select, that is quite complex and that in your mind you think, oh my gosh, I can never draw that. But it brings it down so that you're really only drawing one square at a time. And then you move to the right and to the left of it and connect it. And then you're able to fairly accurately scale up or take a, an image like this and scale it up or draw it. So we take this image, this Chuck Close image, and I'm working on a piece of printer paper here, which is eight and a half by 11. Now we need to scale it up. So I measured across and down one and a half inch squares. And so when you do that, if you have a hard time um, with rulers, you can always measure the side of the paper and give yourself little indicators here, little dashes to indicate where those one and a half marks are, and then do that the same on the other side and then connect the line. So it seems very simple, but some of us are challenged with the ruler, and so that, that's a little uh, scaffolding on it. Now, so you have the one and a half inch marks, and on the side, whichever side you end up with this, um, you want to get rid of the box that, that didn't quite get to that one and a half mark. And you'll also get rid of the bottom or the top, wherever that is for you. So that we have seven boxes, um, I mean, sorry, five boxes across and um, seven boxes up and down here, just like our image, okay? So that is um, us scaling it up. So then we label our boxes A through E across the top, and we do the same thing on our drawing, and one through seven here. Right? so that we know exactly where we're working. So if we start working on C2, then we go here, C2, and we start working there. Or um, D5, right, and we go D5. And then that way we can stay um, on that spot the entire time. So hopefully that helps. So when we start, we can start on C, We'll start right in the middle, here. Right about there. So what is that? C4. So we go to C4. And notice that on my viewfinder, I have made subtle indications here as to like the halfway mark on this square so that I can subdivide this square um, as well. So I can go to my drawing, and I'm, I'm working with an HB pencil. I can go to my drawing and I can loosely guesstimate that halfway point. And these are called hairlines. These are just reference points for us so that we can generally know that the, let's say the bottom part of this, um, the bridge here of the nose and the bottom part of the glasses hits the bridge of the nose at about this halfway mark, which is really helpful because when we go here, we can put this bridge of the nose, or bridge, bridge of the nose and bottom of the glasses, right? We want to keep our drawing, our line, fairly soft, initially because we don't know if we're going to move it. We want to see how much of this um, side of the frame, the circular part of the frame we see, and we notice that this part here is coming in slightly to the right of the halfway mark between here and here. 
So we can mark for ourselves the halfway mark, and this will give us the angle of the glasses. We notice where the glasses here enter this part of the edge, and so from here. So we pay attention to how much space we have between the corner and this bottom here. So this is tedious. It is slow. It's methodical. That's okay. This is how we get the results that we want. We go between a halfway mark and the corner of the frame and notice that the top of the glasses is hitting right between halfway mark, corner of the frame, and then we can arc and get that to land there. We don't know anything other than this little shape. You know that these are glasses because I showed you the image, but if you can really imagine that you really don't even know what you're looking at, even better. So here on this side, we're gonna notice that this, the top of the glasses on this side, goes a little bit higher than those. And so we're gonna note about where those glasses hit here on this square, and then we'll go there. We're gonna notice the curve, and then up here, and we're gonna notice about where the bottom of the glasses hits the edge of the corner. It gets pretty close to the corner. And now we'll take this dark line and we'll go here. And we can make adjustments to our drawing as we look a little closer. But we have the basic idea here with the glasses. We do have more information to look at. Now we have the inside curve here, and we need to notice that that inside curve right about there goes right between our two lines that we had indicated here. And so right in between is the inside edge of the frame. And so you're using you're using your viewfinder to help you locate and make um, an accurate drawing. And you can, you can actually take an image that is quite complex and simplify it down by just looking at shape. Really holding off on detail and just looking at shape. So we have the glasses there, and that subtle indication of like noticing that the frame is a little bit higher on this side, a little bit lower on this side, is already giving us a subtle angle. Now, the next thing that we look at is the shadow shape. And so we look at the shadow on the left side of the nose, and we draw that in, just the shape of the shadow. Keep it fairly simple. We see a little bit of light right here. We see a shadow shape on the inside of the frame. And we mark that. And we can even lightly fill it just initially so that we, can, we don't get lost to what we're looking at. And then we look at the shadow shape here. Again really looking at specifically this angle and noticing what that angle is. So if it goes right about there, comes in at an angle, and then that's our shadow. And we can, what's called, lock it in or mask it in initially so that we don't lose our place. And then we go to the inside corner of the eye, right about there. Inside corner of the eye, we put that information in, lightly draw it, I went to the more sharp corner of my, and the sort of sharp tip of the pencil in order to block that in. So let me see if I can find a drawing that is a little bit ahead now. Well, this is at about the same spot. And so you can see that starting in the center, Usually you want to work to the right or the left, but I started in the center in order to um, in order to give you a more complex demo starting point, but I'll go to other areas now. 
But I want you to notice that while I was drawing all of that, those, the specificity of those shapes, I was also lightly shading, right? Here's another one that went just a little bit darker, right? So that's like the next phase, which I'll do a little bit of so that you can see. But you can see that I'm using a little white, a little bit lighter, darker, darker, darker. Okay? So let me go here. And then we can start shading. I'm not going to shade the whole thing. I just, I just want to show you that I'm really pressing pretty dark here on this part of the glasses. I'm going to go ahead and skip over to this side because I want you to see what happens when we put in shadow. So the darkest part of the glasses. And then shadow shape, which is very dark, but not quite as dark as the glasses, and so I will block it in. And actually, you simplify the, the task of drawing and having to get it perfectly if you can focus on um, shading the shadows. And really looking at value. I'm working at a circular motion. And you can use your drawing board as a hard surface. I should probably be doing that as I'm working. Um, that would be helpful. Because I have a pad of paper underneath here. And it's not quite getting as dark as I would like. But it's dark enough for the demo. So like so. Then we can go up to the next box like this. And you can see that the, again, those dark center lines are going to be helpful to me. So I can carry those through and I can give myself, again, those lines. And that will be helpful for me to note the angle of the brow line. So I can put that in. I can map the shape of a little bit of a light shadow here. I can go here, look at the halfway mark between the corner and the center, halfway mark between corner and center, and go straight up and mark this shape of the brow line. Like that. And then I can even look at there are some wrinkles on the forehead. And I can go to the halfway mark and go just a little bit above that. And notice that the wrinkle of the forehead comes to this center point and then across here. Now notice that my line is very, very soft, right? It's not a, it's not too heavy of a wrinkle there. And so now this is where the easy part comes, I can just shade what I see there. And I can go really dark where I see it almost go into a blur. Like you can see here. So you're doing some really intense observation. Oh my 
something to get your eyes off. I just realized that I missed the corner of the eye right here. Okay. Because there's a connecting line. So you're discerning what is the difference between the value or the darkness of the glasses to the darkness of the shadow versus the darkness on the forehead, right? What are the differences between those, what's called value or the light, lightness to darkness of a color? If you rely only on line, then you absolutely have to have a perfect drawing in order for it to work. But in this case, it's drawing these shadows that's like so, so, so helpful here. And then we would go through and we would connect then from this corner and draw the shadows out for the, for the eye, the eye socket, um, the lid line, and the brow. So let's go ahead and go over, skip a box and go over to 4A and start getting the outside edges of the ear. Actually, let's go here. This is the easiest, 6A. We'll go to 6A and we'll give ourselves our center lines and notice that to the right of the center line is the angle of the coat and it goes above the halfway mark, right about there. So you can see that my initial observation was wrong. And so then all of this, I'm just gonna make a note for myself like that, all of that is going, going to go very dark. And then we can go to the next box. When we get to the next box, we again carry through our hairlines like so, and then go ahead and notice Halfway mark is where the end of the coat is and the bottom of the ear begins. And the coat enters a little bit to the right of that halfway mark. Again, very, very tedious, but so great in that it simplifies drawing. And so then we go to the ear. The ear starts slightly above the center line and then goes slightly to the right of this halfway mark. So we go halfway mark between here and this corner, and then we draw the ear, and it has a slight variation on that, right? And it's all dark. So then all of this gets shaded in very neatly, right? This is just, this is just a, like a, um, I'm making uh, a, re a reminder for myself that I'm going to come back in and I'm going to fill all of this into the, the best of my ability, right? But initially for the beginning, we can do this as a subtle reminder. And then we go to the next box. So you can see how quickly this is going. Again, go to the halfway mark and carry this line through. So we go to the ear. And in this case, it's going to be helpful for us to carry these hairlines through. Because if we make these hairlines through, we can see where the edge of the ear is. And so we notice that the edge of the ear is here, and we're going to want to cut out about that much, or have that cut out shape, out of this corner, this halfway mark. And then connect. So now, it's a pretty dark, it's an ear that's in shadow, and so we're going to go ahead and fill this in. And I'm moving quicker than you will, right? This is, this is not how you're going to do it. You're going to do it very carefully. And then we're going to go to the next one. Again. Carry these through. We're going to notice about how far up that ear goes. It does not go to the halfway mark like way below that, and so we're going to mark that, and we're going to notice where this ear curves and where it comes in here, 
here. And notice the edge of the head, and we're going to go to the top. And then we'll put in the specific, more specific information on the curvature of the, the head. Again, giving ourselves more information. And then we have this box, which is so simple. So just notice how much of the head comes in here, how much of that we see. And then we go to the next box. And in this case, it will be helpful for us to, again, look at these halfway points. Where these, where these subtle indicator marks help us is that we maybe would make an error in terms of guesstimating the size of the head or the curve. But in this case, we don't have to guesstimate at all. We can make adjustments to our drawings and then make sure that the curve hits the same points. So in this case, the curve of the head is hitting right about that halfway mark. And we go there. And then you can start noticing, like this wrinkle on the forehead, curves and goes slightly beyond that same point. And then the next one, right? And you can just kind of do that as you go. And then we'll go up one more. Like so. And then we'll go to the right of that. We'll notice our halfway marks. And notice that the head is coming in about halfway or a little bit below halfway here. We'll go off. And you see then how the drawing is forming itself. Now, once we go all the way around, we can then go into this area of the face here. I'll do one more and then um, stop. So I already have my halfway points. And this one's pretty easy because we can see how dark it is. And we can see hair here, so I'll make subtle indication of that hair. We already have, we already know where this, um, where this wrinkle on the forehead is happening. And so we can come in here, put that in. And then we already know where the halfway mark is and the, and the next wrinkle is right about there. A slight curve to it. And we put that in there. What we will need to mark for ourselves is the shadow shape, how much of it we see and we're gonna map that in. We're gonna put in a little bit of the eye that we see, a little bit of the eyelid. And the lashes. We don't wanna generalize information. We want to be as specific as we can. And so in this case, then we slow it down and we go very, very dark where we see the deepest, darkest values. And we're gonna carry that all the way through here. So let me show you a sample. This is nowhere near complete. And you can see that it, it has that um, linear hatching or linear shading. And I would need to go through this after doing all of this and start to deepen all of the values as I go through. But the one thing that you can see is that the shapes are very, very specific and very detailed and they're not generic, right? So that's where you're gonna to wanna to go with your chuck close uh, drawing. Um, take your time and uh, make sure that you measure it out correctly and start to look. 